Hi, I'm Patty Cake, and this is my best friend, Brent. We've been besties for a while now, and one of the things we bonded over was our shared love of Mad Libs. On Christmas a few years ago, Brent pitched the idea to me to create a show where we use AI art to accentuate the humor of Mad Libs. Three weeks later, we started filming, and we haven't stopped since. Through this project, we hope to share our weird humor and to highlight both the unexpected beauty and complete absurdity of AI-generated art. Welcome to Mid-Journey Mad Libs. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please come in, make yourself at home. My name is Patty Cake, and welcome to Patty Cake Games and another episode of Mid-Journey Mad Libs. And with me, as always, is my best friend and co-host, Brent. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> well, we're not going to waste any time. You guys know how this works. We send each other Mad Libs. We send each other the answers to go into those Mad Libs. We then take those Mad Libs. We run them through Mid-Journey. We create art. We get together. We share the art with each other, and we laugh. And that's the show. And we hope you like it. And if you do like it, look down below the video. There's a button just for you. It's a thumbs up button. It just means you like the video. And if you click on that, you might as well click on the subscribe button. It's right next to it. It doesn't cost anything. And it really helps out the channel. And if you're doing that, then you might as well click the notification bell. Because that'll let you know when new videos get posted to the channel. Also, if you look in the description, there's a bunch of cool links. There's a bunch of social media links. There's a Twitter. There's an Instagram. There's a TikTok. There's also a Discord. That's the really important one. Come and join the Discord. It's really fun. You can hang out with us. You can check out all the art from the show. You can see it up close and personal instead of having to pause your video. Uh, you can share your own AI art with us, or you can talk about gaming stuff or movies or TV or anything you want. We're, we're happy. We, we love to talk to everyone about everything. So come and see us on the Discord. I'm first tonight, and I'm really excited uh, about this Mad Lib because it's, it's in the style of an artist that I really like. Uh, now, I will give you fair warning that this did not give me anything funny other than the Mad Lib. The Mad Lib itself is pretty funny, but the actual art, there's nothing funny in the art because he's a horror artist, so it's pretty creepy. So, this is Seven Signs, your cat is trying to kill you, and my art is in the style of Junji Ito. Junji Ito was born on July 31st, 1963 in Sakashija, which is now a part of Nakatsugawa Gifu, Japan. He developed his love for horror at a very young age after his older sisters introduced him to the manga Mummy Teacher by Kazuo Umezu. He began drawing at the age of four and continued this as a hobby until 1984 when he became a dental technician and had issues balancing the two. In 1987, he submitted a short story to Monthly Halloween that won an honorable mention in the Kazuo Umezu Prize with Umezu himself as one of the judges. This story ran for 13 years and was later serialized as Tomi. Ito worked as a dental technician for three years until becoming a full-time manga artist. His anatomical drawing style was influenced heavily by his interest in anatomy books for medical students, which provided information on human musculature for his artwork. Ito's main body of work consists of many subgenres of horror, but mainly body horror and cosmic horror, with common themes of the predator-prey relationship, loss of humanity, and obsession. He has stated that many of his works reflect his own fears of death, war, insects, and paranoia. In addition to horror manga, Ito has worked on illustrations for Magic the Gathering, an album cover for Muck in 2002, and he was cited by Guillermo del Toro as one of the chief collaborators for the canceled video game project Silent Hills. Many of Ito's works have been adapted to films, most notably his original short story Tomi, which was serialized into seven films between 1998 and 2011. His work, along with the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, were also the main inspirations for the game World of Horror, which was released in 2023. Keep watching this channel for a playthrough of that in the near future. I've always been a fan of horror art, and he has become one of my favorites. So let's see how Mid Journey handles my Mad Lib tonight in the style of the iconic Junji Ito. There's a flip side to all those flabby expressions of love. And here they are, in all their flabby glory. It's an interesting collage, which I, I it's, it's like all separate images sort of pasted together. It almost makes me think of uh, there's a place, and I maybe you can help me remember where it is. It's in Houston. The Art Car Museum. Well, there's the Art Car Museum. But it's in that sort of area, but there's a there's a lamp post or something. It's right near the the zoo, I think, or right near the park, and it's just covered mm. with stickers. 
like various stickers, like top to bottom, and yeah. they've been pasted There's on top of each it. other. Yeah, and so this is what it reminds me of. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this looks like that place that I've been in Houston like 20 or 30 times. <laughs> I also like that there is a Starfleet symbol <laughs> at the top left of the picture. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the first flabby expression of love is headbutting. So headbutting, beware. Your cat is not showing you that it trusts you. Oh, <laughs> I was waiting for more. I know that he has a lot of art that has this burst bond. Yes, it's very famous. Oh. That and spirals. He like he does spirals and concentric circles as well. But yeah, it's the the burst thing is very much in his wheelhouse. But yeah, it's just a weird weird creature with a not semi a semi human hand. <laughs> I feel so better. Strange. Maybe these people don't realize what cats are. <laughs> so beware. Your cat is not showing you that it trusts you. It's telling you that your feet are numbered. Your feet I'm are so numbered. I'm so glad that you got that. I'm so glad you had to look at that, and that's the one you had to use. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I very much appreciate the horribly misshapen feet that look like finger toes. <laughs> no. I think I'd be okay with it if it weren't for like the lack of a good solid heel. True. I think True. the two of them combined just makes it more uncomfortable. And I do like um, the uh, the very typical anime haunted schoolboy ghost thing in the center. It's very reminiscent of lots of anime does this sort of style with the the hair covering the eyes and the deadpan expression. Uh, it's, very, very evocative of, of a of quite well-known trope in anime. Powerful purrs. Powerful purrs. This is not a sign of true love. It's flamboyantly a battle cry. Oh, my. Oh. Wow. I love this. I think it's beautiful. Because it's heart-shaped, so it's love. It's like a tunnel. It's a tunnel of love. <laughs> With spikes. There's an element of danger, which is cool. I like that. Love bites. Love bites. Not actually a hermit of love. <laughs> that's the name of my uh that's that's the hermit name of my folk rock band. Love. My folk rock band is the Hermit of Love. <laughs> I <dig it. laughs> and our hit song is Love Bites. Um, <laughs> yeah, but this this kind of was interesting. And I, I chose this one because it had the concentric circles, which is another thing that he's famous for. Is the yeah. Concentric circles and spirals. It's almost like a witch hat, but not quite. Yeah, a little. It's also a little cloakish, but also not quite. It's not quite. Like, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it looks like something you would wear, but then you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not actually a hermit of love. It's actually tasting you to decide which bit of you to eat first. Knee, please. Uh. So she's on her knees. So it understood some of the prompt. <laughs> There's no tasting though. I had a lot of problems with this particular sentence. Uh, it. I had a lot of problems with this particular picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the picture. I think it's cool. Like the the it's, the walls yeah. that seem to be sort of made of bones, but also bone tree roots. branches, ro like bone roots. Yeah, it's it's a neat amalgamation of the two. And then of course the weird skeleton thing that's on its front hands. It's yeah, it's it's really really weird and unnerving. I had to alter like five or six words in that sentence to get it to actually not say, "Well, you can't do this. It's banned." You can't do cannibalism. Yeah, apparently <laughs> cannibalism is not something it's it's allowed to do. <laughs> Tail twitching, uh, the equivalent of your cat frolicking a sword at you. I love this picture so much. It's cute and scary at the same time, which is a great combination. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. It's like Kill Bill, but with a cat. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait till you see one of the honorable mentions. It's definitely Kill Bill with a cat. <laughs> Tummy up. Do not fall for this moist trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is crazy because this looks like it's someone's bathroom. Uh -huh. So they basically <laughs> decorated their bathroom wall with a mural of a screaming ghoul. Right. That's that's looking at them and screaming. So apparently they 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 want everyone who goes into their bathroom to be very self conscious about exposing themselves because <laughs> I mean if I had to you know go to the bathroom uh -huh. and I had to drop trow and I saw this it would kind of give me a little bit of a complex. <laughs> 
As soon as you put your armpit near your cat's belly, it will scratch the Vitamita Vegemin out of it. Hello, friends. I'm your Vitamita Vegemin girl. <laughs> he seems so shocked, and so does the cat. They're both shocked by this like, revelation. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I'm just not going to put my armpit on my cat. I'm right. going to keep it real nice and tight here. And the cat's like, I don't want you to put your armpit on me. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll scratch the meat of that Benjamin out of you. It's so tasty, too. Next is kneading. This is not a pill bottle of affection. Are you sure? It kind of looks like it. Oh, well, it's hard. <laughs> Sevens and Mickey Mouse ears. All, the, all those things are like happy things. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't look scary or unhappy. She's just like a girl trapped in the bottle. This is not a pill bottle of affection. Your cat is second checking your organs for weakness. <laughs> that hand, uh, that hand is uh, so weird. <laughs> that hand. You know what? I feel like if my hand looked like that, the cat could have it. Yeah, right? Hey, please, chew it off. What happened to your hand? All you can't go, oh, it was hideous, so I yeah, chopped it off. Right. But if you said, oh, my cat ate it, I mean, they'd be like, oh, my what? God. You know. <laughs> right? They'd be, what? <laughs> well, I fed it to him willingly. <laughs> What? <laughs> and gifts, the final sign of affection. Gifts. A dead crow is not a gift. It's a wicked warning. Did you ever see The Godfather? Wow. Isn't that great? That <laughs> I love that. A great sentence. That is a great sentence. That, that it's not a gift. It's a wicked warning. Yeah, mm -hmm. if someone drops a dead crow on my porch, that's exactly what I'm going to think. <laughs> That is not news. I am. I don't want a cat killing or crow killing cat. Do you know that'll piss all the crows off? Right. Crows are smart. Yes, they are. Crows are like incredibly smart. In my head canon, this is Odin in his human form. Ooh. That's great. That's great. <laughs> well, you ready for the honorable mentions? Well, of course. Okay, here we go. <laughs> These are flabby expressions of love. I, I don't know why they're all screaming. <laughs> well, maybe it's just they're like showing uh, how big my mouth can be. I don't know. I mean, maybe the bigger, flabbier your mouth hole. I gotta stop. <laughs> oh, I loved this one. This is not super yeah. indicative of his style, but this is just really cool. And this is feet are numbered. Your feet are numbered. Thus, all the shoes. <laughs> This isn't like even necessarily manga. You would see a lot of independent comics with this style. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's very manga inspired, you know. Yeah. Uh, I could also see this being like a new anime about street kids. Yeah. You know, so I love this one. <laughs> this is a powerful purrs. This is not a sign of true love. It's a flamboyantly. It's flamboyantly a battle cry. Well, yeah, if I had all those creepy things behind me, I'd be battle crying. <laughs> uh, but she's just, she's super creepy. That jagged mouth is so weird and disturbing. Oh, it was also giving me Michael Jackson vibes. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. It's so cool. This was, I misspelled his name. <laughs> when I did oh. the prompt. So it didn't give me anything that was close to his style, but it gave me this and I just loved it. So oh, I got I to gotta keep this one and share it because it's cool. So yeah, this is the the more Kill Bill. Kill Bill with a cat. Yeah, that's that's really cool though. It's um almost like Beatrix Potter. <laughs> right? Meets uh, Japanese folk art. <laughs> Your cat ah! is second checking your organs for weakness. <laughs> so this this is like a, a, a lionine or leonine humanish thing. But this whole hallway it seems so extraneous for one door. Yeah. I feel like this is like hotel. It gives me hotel vibes. Yeah. But like old hotel, like like the Overlook Hotel. Well that is it. That is the end of my Mad Lib with art inspired by Junji Ito. I think I finally got him fine-tuned, and he's actually going to give us real instructions this time. I hope so. Let's find out. <laughs>
ChatGPT, how do you get a promotion at work? Yes, I understand the need to advance in a career, as many humans do. Here are some tips to help you achieve that goal. Start by building an elaborate fort around your desk using office supplies like empty cardboard boxes, reams of paper, and sticky notes. Decorate your fort with colorful streamers and call it your promotion palace. Declare every Monday as Mime Mode Monday. Show up to work and mime all your tasks silently. Instead of typing on your keyboard, pretend to type in the air, and mime your way through meetings. Your boss will be so puzzled they'll promote you just to make it stop. Change your email signature to include a random, impressive sounding title like Space Time Continuum Coordinator or Chief Happiness Officer. Your boss might think you've already been promoted. Cover your work attire with an excessive amount of glittery stickers. Every time you receive a compliment, add more stickers to your outfit. You'll be so dazzling that your boss will promote you just to see how you can possibly outshine yourself. Institute mandatory office karaoke sessions every afternoon. Sing your favorite power ballads loudly, off-key, and passionately. Your boss might promote you just to get some peace and quiet. Channel your inner Picasso and start painting murals on your desk using neon paint. Transform your workspace into a work of art that leaves everyone in awe. Your boss might promote you to an artist in residence role. For a sweet twist, secretly replace all the office's coffee with hot chocolate. Your co-workers will be pleasantly surprised and your boss might just promote you to Director of Chocolate Affairs. There you go. Follow these steps and your boss is sure to see your potential. Yeah, there's a few of those that I, I could feel good about doing. I don't know if they give me a promotion. What are you wearing? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a head wrap. Okay, let me rephrase this question. Why are you wearing a head wrap? <laughs> well, I mean, because it's time for my Mad Lib, and it's in the style of Johannes Vermeer, <gasps> famous for the girl with the pearl earring. That's right. I forgot. Okay. Johannes Vermeer, a luminary of the Dutch Golden Age, remains an enigmatic figure, but his contribution to art is profound and enduring. Born in Delft in 1632, Vermeer's career unfolded during a remarkable period of artistic and cultural flourishing. His paintings, while few in number, are celebrated for their exquisite depiction of light and the intimate portrayal of everyday life. Vermeer's distinctive style is marked by a meticulous attention to detail, an extraordinary mastery of light and shadow, and a keen sense of composition. His works often capture domestic scenes portraying women engaged in activities like reading, playing musical instruments, or pouring milk. In these seemingly ordinary moments, Vermeer elevates the mundane to the extraordinary, infusing his paintings with a timeless quality. Among his most iconic works is The Girl with a Pearl Earring. The mysterious expression of the subject and the luminance of the pearl have made his painting a cultural phenomenon. The play of light on surfaces, the delicate rendering of textures, and the nuanced expressions of its subjects are hallmarks of Vermeer's artistry. The Milkmaid is another masterpiece that showcases Vermeer's ability to capture the essence of everyday life. The warm, diffuse light falls upon a maid as she pours milk, creating a scene of quiet beauty. The careful rendering of the details, from the play of light on the milk jug to the texture of the bread, reflects Vermeer's dedication to precision and realism. Despite his artistic brilliance, Vermeer was not widely recognized during his lifetime outside of the region of Delft, and he produced a relatively small number of paintings, less than 50 in fact. Some of the reasons for this were raising his 11 children, running an inn that was the family business, and also because he painted quite slowly and meticulously, usually completing only three paintings per year. 
Another factor that contributed to his limited exposure outside of Delft was that many of his paintings were bought by a local patron. It was finally in the 19th century that his work experienced a rediscovery, capturing the admiration of art enthusiasts and later generations of artists. Today, Johannes Vermeer is celebrated as one of the great masters of the Dutch Golden Age, and his 34 surviving paintings continue to enchant viewers with their timeless beauty, offering detailed glimpses into the ordinary moments of a bygone era. So, let's go ahead and enjoy my Mad Lib in the style of Johannes Vermeer with a little extra thrown in. Last week, I got style blend. Finally. Took you long enough. I know. A whole entire <laughs> season. I missed out on the whole style blend thing. So this was Johannes Vermeer with the style blend of Wallace and Gromit. Are you ready? I am I, ready. I had so much I had so much fun making this one. My Mad Lib tonight is Battle Bud. And it's basically a conversation between what I think are two teenagers who are gamers. That's, I've, I've had many of those conversations, but not as a teenager. <laughs> I mean, I did as a Welcome teenager to, too, uh, but as an adult as well. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Mindscape. Players, are you ready? Ready. Oh, that's cute. That's so Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> but it also but has them playing these the guitar things, and I want to say that Vermeer has people playing instruments. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. And there's there's one thing in the in the image that kind of bothers me though. The guy in the front looks like he's plucking the guy behind him's eye out with the neck of his guitar. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Unless there's that's just the... this cute little divot in, the, in it that you know makes it look that way. But, oh. Right. So that's the only that's thing that bugs me about it. Everything else about this is really lo really lovely. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, dude, are you ready for me to destroy your blimp? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your blimp. I'm going to destroy it. It looks like... Oh, it's got little tiny legs. I just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Um, it, so this is like a really odd game for sure. It really I, is. I see a lot of Wallace and Gromit in this. I do too. Maybe the architecture is Vermeer, but I don't remember him for, you know, having much architectures. Mostly it's still life or not. Like people doing things. Right. <clears throat> Colin. Ha <laughs> ha. You can't expose anything with that wrinkly foot of yours. For once, the feet are not completely horrifying. <laughs> Obviously, they're not perfect. There are some extra toes. Yeah, and... there's there's extra toes there. And they're they're very bony, as I said. But, you know, older people tend to have kind of bony feet. So that doesn't necessarily bother me that much. This is the most intact, most non-horrifying feet that I've seen in Midjourney so far. Well, <laughs> and that's saying Here's something. a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Here's the wonderful <laughs> thing about this art. It looks very much like Vermeer. It does. Absolutely. But it looks like Vermeer painting Wallace. <laughs> it can barely function. You need a real lizard. Then you'll be able to use maximum power. <laughs> Which is apparently shoes. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that wrinkly foot of yours, it can barely function. But yeah. you need a real lizard. So... Apparently, it's, uh, it's a type of shoe. <laughs> or Which is funny because the shoes, the shoes kind of look like sandals on top of plastic feet. Yeah, maybe you like <laughs> it, it's supposed to look barefooted, but you're really not. Right. Um, <laughs> Kevin, look out! A group of octopi are right behind you. Blast them with your cake. <laughs> I love that so much. That's so it's, adorable. It's so great. It's fully Wallace and Gromit, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. It's completely Wallace but and Gromit. Yeah. It's so great. I love it. It's He's a like, whole bunch of octopi and cake. And that <laughs> it cake like, looks good, too. Yeah, it's not like they're blasting with the cake. It looks like they're at a party. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's your party and they're coming up behind you. Oh, true. Colin, that's too sickly sweet. I need something a little more cloven, like a valentine. This is such a perfect blend of the two. That's why it is here. Oh my uh, god, It wasn't it's necessarily so the funniest, but it is Wallace and Gromit 
made into a Vermeer art piece. Like absolutely, it's like he animated his characters to look like Vermeer, but he still used his own aesthetic. Mm -hmm. That the the, the the clothing, the type of food that's on the tables, these candles, everything about it just screams Vermeer to me. I, mm -hmm. I love it, Kevin. Whatever. Did you do your sock homework? It was pretty bloated. <laughs> <laughs> here's this here's this dude again <laughs> what is well this what is, is a younger weird, version it's a younger version of him yes yeah, before his feet all got, got all bony but now he's well, got this weird shoes like those shoes they're like sandals sort of like flip-flops i but think it's weird but look at the sock it's like he's wearing like these socks where the heel and the toes are exposed right and then I mean, the shoe just... the shoe has like a strap that goes around the heel and a strap that goes over the, the, the middle of the foot, which is not all that unusual, but the shape of the bottom of the foot is really strange. It's like there's a heel supposed to be there, but it's not actually there. I don't know, <laughs> uh, well, the other foot's in shadow, and I don't think it's wearing the shoe. Yeah. Maybe it's just got the sock for Colin. Not yet. Hey, can I buy a magic vibe from you? I've got 39 credits. <laughs> That's cool. It's... <laughs> That's interesting. It's like little wood block carvings that are painted. Yeah, it's it's quite odd. It's kind of cute. I like it's the very little cute. Mat on the floor. Um, kind of yeah. looks like the. <laughs> it kind of looks like the floor is camouflage. Also, of course, maybe this is all in game. Maybe this is like what what. That's true. They are talking about like a game. game. They are talking about a game, so that's possible. Kevin, hold on. Vic is calling me. I think it's dinner time. Oh. We're having green bean casserole. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is like someone took a Vermeer a Vermeer painting and then posed to make a photograph of it. <laughs> um, and I'm I'm still trying to figure this green bean casserole out. It yeah, looks more it's... like just green beans mixed with French fries. <laughs> It's kind of what it looks like. You're right. And are these pita breads all around it or just really big cookies? Cookies. I don't, they seem like <laughs> sugar cookies to me, but it's interesting. It's like Vermeer's Kitchen. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's the name of the YouTube show, Vermeer's Kitchen. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> Colin, that's cool. I just spilled paint all over my keyboard anyway. Next time, buddy. Yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> definitely Wallace and Gromit. I've actually seen those sheep in the Wallace and Gromit films. So, <laughs> and the paint, it looks like they're painting a Vermeer. <laughs> it does. Oh my gosh, that was a nice catch. I didn't even notice that until you mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, there's a whole painting behind them. It's like they've been painting a Vermeer painting. That's funny. <laughs> and it's God. time. Ah uh, yes, welcome to Mindscape. Players, are you ready? That's I cool. Love this. That's so this cool. This is so cool. This is the game it, world it, I want to be in. <laughs> yeah, this is like, I don't know, like mist, but cool. <laughs> but it's definitely a Wallace and Gromit world for sure. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for me to destroy your blimp? The artwork in this game. Right? The guy front and center is just that look on his face is just weird. <laughs> it's like, nah. Oh. And then you got Gumby arms there. Ugh. Right? And then Mr. Pink Pajamas is just sort of done with the whole thing. He's just looking to the side like, I'm so over this. <laughs> oh, the octopus, but the, the cake. Yeah, the octopus and the cake. And combine them together. So now it's an octopus cake. That is an adorable it's octopus cake. cute. Fond an octopus cake, which we could actually make. Yeah, yeah, that's not that. That would not be. I mean, I'm not very good at using fondant, but I could probably do something like that. It's a couple of ginger dudes with their feet showing. Which one? Okay, crap. <laughs> I don't know which one this is. Not yet. Hey, can I buy a magic vibe from you? I've got 39 oh, okay. credits. Really? Okay. <laughs> They look very, uh, they almost look like vintage baseball players. Like the old I, I baseball the uniforms or like it, that. Yeah, because it kind of does sort of look Vermeerish still. Yeah, it the, does. The style of the clothing. That's the same one, by the way. So, that, them. And this is the same one. Oh, okay. Can I buy a magic vibe? Okay, so, yeah. It's, it interpreted vibe as something musical, which is totally makes sense. 
and I, it, it also brought in that instrument thing that we, we uh, that Vermeer has, and the windows look like the the background looks like Wallace and Gromit created a Vermeer cartoon. So yeah. once again, a nice happy blend. Ah yes, uh, green bean casserole. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> green bean casserole, <laughs> and he happened to fall into it. Whoops! <laughs> it's so weird. I had to put it there. <laughs> that's great. And that's it. That was great. Green bean casserole. So I, I just <laughs> really, really loved doing this one. It, it was, it was very fun. Well, it's that time. You know what it is. Spinning time! Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Hope it don't suck. Yes, it is that time. It's time to spin the wheel to find out what our word themes are going to be like in next week's episode of Mid Journey Mad Libs. We're at the halfway point, so the wheel has been refilled with all the lovely things that we had for the first half of the season. And now, hopefully, we'll get something that we didn't get in the first half. So we're going to spin it four times, twice for me and twice for Brent. That's going to tell us what our word themes are going to be like in next week's episode. So here we go with our first spin. Brent, this is going to be your first word theme. I want QWERTY! Give me some QWERTY! QWERTY! Nope, you got I'm Hungry When's Lunch. <laughs> we're gonna foodie, foodie, foodie show next week. <laughs> okay. And here is your second word theme. Party! 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 Oh, get the Synonyms! All right, oh. so you think it's something different, because now I get to do extra work and change your words. <laughs> All right, and here is my first word theme. <laughs> what the? What are the odds? <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, if, there we if go. If you get couplets, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, my second word theme. Oh, I almost did. Okay, <laughs> things of a certain color. All right, okay. so let's find out what color I need to use. <laughs> Remember in season one where we, the other person just picked it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Purple. Big time. Things that are purple. All right, so that's it. That's going to be our themes in next week's episode of Mid Journey Mad Lips. Well, we've done it again. We've we've disparaged cats. So if you're a, you know, an a, a Larophobe, or I think that's the right word, uh, that one was for you. And then we had one for all the gamers and all the Wallace and Gromit fans mm -hmm. and um, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, and, I mean, uh, Vermeer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we had some creepy feet, too. So oh, we're keeping yeah, the trend. We have to keep the trend throughout the whole season. We have to have creepy feet all the time. That's, a, that's so you know what a thing. this means? What does it mean? This means, please like us. <laughs> if I had a little, you know, one of those little return to sender mail things where you, like, you know, subscribe to a magazine, I'd tell you to do that. And, of course, don't forget to, you know, use the little remind me so that you don't miss us because we can pop up at any old time. That's right. Click that little bell. Okay, well, we're going to get out of here. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you guys next week. Like and subscribe. The algorithm demands it. <laughs>